In this video, I want to show you a really simple trick to make your lighting instantly better. As you may know, lighting can really make or break a scene, so as soon as I found out about this, I was pretty excited. We're going to be talking about IES textures and using them with point lights. So to demonstrate what they are, I have a simple scene here. I'm in Cycles Render, and I have my device set to GPU Compute. I have a point light in the scene, and the only setting that I've changed is I've increased the power to 20 watts. If I go into Rendered View, you're going to see that it's doing what point lights do. It's emitting light evenly in every direction. And this is actually not realistic. Different light bulbs will cause light to scatter in a variety of different ways as they leave the bulb. And that's exactly where IES textures come in. So what exactly is an IES texture? Well, basically, anytime a company creates a bulb, they run a test that allows them to extrapolate how the light scatters when it leaves the bulb. This information is stored in an IES texture, and it can be used to create simulations of that light bulb. As of Blender 2.8, IES textures are supported and they're really simple to use. Furthermore, there are tons of them on the internet for free. Right now I'm on a website called ieslibrary.com, which I'll link in the description, and there are just tons and tons of these free to download here. So to use an IES texture, all you do is you select one, you'll click download IES, put it somewhere safe, and then inside of Blender, you're gonna select your point light and you're gonna select use nodes. Now if we go to the shading tab, we're gonna see the simple point light set up with the emission shader going into the light output. And I'm just gonna to switch to rendered view here real quick. Now, if I press shift A, I can search and I can add IES texture. To load in our IES texture, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click external and then we're gonna to browse to that texture. Finally, all we have to do is take this factor and plug it into the strength. And you can see now that that IES texture is implemented. If I rotate this, it'll become very apparent. And that's really all there is to adding IES textures in Blender. You can increase the strength here, you can decrease it. In this case, I can probably decrease the wattage. But let's look at this in an actual setting. So here's a scene I created. I'm gonna demonstrate how much better IES textures make the lighting look. In it, I have five point lights and a really dimly lit sunset HDR. As this stands, it's not the best looking. The lighting is very soft and even, leading to little contrast, and overall, it just doesn't look good. Also, we have this light bleeding on the ceiling, which really doesn't make much sense because these lights are recessed. So the only settings that I've changed is I've increased the emission here to two, and again, the power to 20 watts. So what I have here is an IES texture that I downloaded. It's not plugged in yet, and it's just a recessed ceiling light. I'm going to leave the strength here too, and I'm not going to change any other settings in the scene. I'm simply just going to plug this into the strength on the emission shader here. And instantly, that looks way better. Not only is it brighter, but the contrast is more punchy, and it just looks a lot more realistic. So one thing I do want to point out about these is that sometimes they can be a little confusing when they're not fully symmetrical on the Z axis. In this case, you can see that this point light is rotated 90 degrees. And if I rotate it back to zero, you're gonna see that it's kind of emitting at an angle here. And that's just gonna be the case with some of these lighting profiles. Despite this, I still like the way this one looks, so I just rotated it 90 degrees. And that's the only change that I made to this. So in conclusion, here's what the render looks like with just the basic point lights. And with the IES textures applied. And I think it's easy to conclude which one's better. And that's really all there is to this tutorial. If you enjoyed, please slap a like on it. And to see more content from me, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I wish you all the best.